Hey, good morning, everybody. Good welcome. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to Monday's with Morris Oops, Beauty. did I not give you equal regard? No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> you, you gave me an equal regard. I did? Regard. Okay. <laughs> so, we welcome. <clears throat> this is a series on having great relationships. And for a while, we did a series on um, knots and tangles, what you can do to really screw up your relationships. Mm. Got a lot of responses from that, Judy. And a lot of people said, now that we know how to really screw it up, can you give us some advice on how to make it work? How to do it right. Uh -huh. okay. So I think about a month ago, uh, we started doing a, a new series on um, what successful couples do differently than unsuccessful couples. Yes. Ten habits of highly successful couples in their relationships. Mm -hmm. And in general, they seem to do, according to Brett... Um, Atkinson, thank you. There are two buckets that we've been dealing with. One is when you have a disagreement or somebody says something that's upsetting for you, mm -hmm. successful people handle it differently than unsuccessful. They definitely do not go into personal attack, defensiveness. They basically show curiosity and some other ways of dealing with it. Also, they reliably contribute to the emotional bank account. Where they're saying things that are good for the other person. Making other, deposits. Making deposits, uh -huh. exactly. So okay. um, we've done three so far. And I think all of these stay, sit, fit, in, fit in the bucket of standing up for yourself. Uh -huh. so we did um, no judging. Yeah. We did um, stand up for yourself without putting the partner down. Mm -hmm. And we did seek to understand first. That's probably an emotional bank account, a contribution, would you say? Oh, I think it totally is because when you're doing that, you're using a certain kind of listening. Okay. Uh, you know, a deeper kind of listening, you're being really respectful. Yeah. I think of your partner and that almost in inevitably leads your partner to feel like yeah. you've given them the gift. Yeah. So that's definitely a deposit in your emotional bank account. It's interesting you explain it that way. I was seeing a couple not too long ago <coughs> where the um, partners were really having a, a good deal of tension and disconnection. Mm -hmm. They lost connection. Um, he was afraid to bring something up for fear that his partner would yell at him, find him stupid, or be critical. So he got silent. Yeah. She took his silence as disregard. Mm -hmm. And when we're doing the session together, and we did the couple's dialogue, which is really a listening, a skill. Tool, yeah. Yeah, and she did a really great job of listening, acknowledging, appreciating his mm. fear, his concern. She said, I really understand where you're coming from. It makes sense to me, given your point of view, that you would avoid me. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he did, she did that, his, his yeah. face changed. He looked 10 years younger. He said, thank you. Thank you for really getting that. And then he was able to do the same thing for her. I think that was a good case of giving equal regard. And that's what we're going to be yeah. talking about today. Okay. okay. What do you think about this notion, giving equal regard, not necessarily equal time? <coughs> well, I think it's a gift when you're able to let your partner know that whatever their point of view is, uh -huh. um, or their concerns are, that they're entitled to those things, okay. and that they're equally entitled as you are to have your point of view, um, oh. you know, your concerns, mm -hmm. whether somebody understands them or not. It's helpful if you can be understood. It sounds like with your couple, yeah. what happened was an experience of being understood yes. on the part of the man by his partner. Yes. And that he, given that he thanked her for it, mm -hmm. um, you know, that suggests to me that it was a deep feeling of somebody caring enough to really listen yeah. and get how he was feeling and that his feeling was acceptable yeah. to her. It may have been different than how she felt. But it was equally acceptable for him to feel the way he felt. It was really interesting because he was convinced if he told her how he was feeling about what he was anxious about, she would be angry and critical. It was totally the opposite. 
Well, I think a lot of times we, we're afraid of what our partner's reaction is going to be, not necessarily based on what their reactions have been sometimes, mm -hmm. but based on things earlier in, in our life, like how our parents or our teachers responded to us mm -hmm. when we told them how we felt or what we were afraid of or why we felt the way we did. So the past kind of intrudes on the present oh, okay. and creates a, a barrier between people. So sometimes we take past experience and predict our future <clears throat> from past times in which we were criticized. I actually think most of the time we do, unless we're really aware yeah. of where our reactions come from, what has fed them, and we can explain that both okay. to ourselves and our partner. But I think often people are not really aware of yeah. the effect of their okay. past experiences. So, for example, if you express some thought to me, and you say, Moss, I want to run something by you, a soft startup, I think that's what we call it, then I say, that's silly, I can't believe you're thinking that, or oh, yeah. that's ridiculous, um, you're always worried about that. That's not exactly a, a giving <laughs> a, a good response. No, it? it's putting me down. It's putting you down. It's, yeah, it's yeah. being critical of how I feel, or the way in which I think about things rather than maybe acknowledging, gee, I have a different point of view about that, yeah. or I don't see it, can you explain more to me okay. what you understand about why you see it that way? But sometimes we just feel how we feel, yeah. and it's like, you know, the old thing of like, why do I like chocolate better than vanilla? I uh -huh. can't explain that, right. but I do. Right? Yeah. So if I say, oh, you like I, what you like. I like chocolate, and you go, well, that's ridiculous. Right. Vanilla's much right. better. Right. That's the same kind of, I think, an argument. Yeah. It's like um, Brett, in his article, I think it's called 10 Habits of Highly Successful People, mm -hmm. Couples, he talks about giving equal regard is like a democracy. It's one person, yeah. one vote. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter why I'm choosing to vote. I don't have to convince you, it doesn't have to be reasonable, but I'm entitled to my vote. In a relationship, I'm entitled to my opinion. Each, uh -huh. each opinion um, uh, counts for number one. And successful couples or successful partners give what we call equal regard, even if you disagree. So my opinion yeah. is equally important as is your opinion. Exactly. Even if we don't agree. We may have to then figure out yeah how to handle any particular situation where we disagree, but there's nothing wrong with either one of our points of view. Right. And I think here's the key. We can argue yeah. back and forth, really fight for our positions, take mm -hmm. a stand without putting the person down, yeah. being disdainful, rolling your eyes, mm -hmm. smirking. You know, I'm arguing from my point of view because I think it's important. And you're entitled to argue your point of view. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not me, the more dominant person, win. It's like we want to make sure yeah. each person is expressing his or her opinion. And then right. as long as we have an underlying sense that I respect you and you have a right to your point of view, and I feel it's coming from you towards me, that's called giving equal regard, mm -hmm. then we can figure out a compromise or some solution. So successful yeah. couples are you, really just as much as unsuccessful couples, but it's not personal. You know, we, we argue for our point of view, but at some point we say, okay, where can we go from here? Uh -huh. So when you say it's not personal, are you saying we don't personally attack each other for our point of view? Right. We, we respect that, I, I need to respect that your point of view is equally as important as my point yeah. of view, even if I disagree. It's like basically my saying, thinking, you don't really have to explain yourself. If that's how you feel, then I'll make room for your feelings. Mm -hmm. You're my partner and your feelings should count as much as mine. So it's not about who's right or wrong, mm -hmm. okay? So let's give a demonstration, All right. okay? So let's say um, yeah. I'm bothered by something and I, um, I'm a little reluctant to bring it up. But you sense in me, um, I'm a little adrift, mm -hmm. not connected, ignore, maybe it feels like you're being ignored, but rather than coming at me with an attack, a hard approach, like what's wrong with you, 
There you go again, being sullen, which is what some people do, maybe a lot, you find a way of doing a soft start up and opening up maybe a dialogue with me about what I'm going through. I okay? see. Okay. Do okay. you want me to start? Yeah, let's do oh, it. Oh, okay. So, Moss, it, it looks to me like you're a little bit distracted late, lately, yeah. and I'm not sure what's going on with you. Okay. Is there something going on? Well, yeah, I've been reluctant to bring it up, but yeah. I appreciate you bringing it up that way and, and, and just saying you notice I'm, 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 I'm cause you're concerned. I, I um, you know, I know how important it is for you to um, remodel the house to put the extension on. Oh yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was concerned about. I uh -huh. really didn't want, didn't want to disappoint you or get into an argument or you thinking I'm cheap or something. <clears throat> but maybe because of the COVID, uh -huh. my practice has dropped quite a bit. Uh -huh. People aren't coming in. <clears throat> So I'm not seeing so many people. I'm feeling a little anxious about having enough money to cover bills and also to wow. do the renovation. I didn't even oh. realize that that oh, was didn't. what was going on oh, with you. Okay. I, oh, I wish you had like let me know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's stressful. Yeah. It seems like it's really stressful. Yeah, and I didn't want to disappoint you, and I didn't want you to be critical of me, but I know how important it was oh. for you to do this, because mm. we've been talking about it for two goddamn years. True. And saving some money. Oh, I see where you're going. See, and and I, I I think for me safety is really important, knowing that we have a kind of a nest egg, but for you I know that doing mm -hmm. the house aesthetically it's really important, so I was reluctant to bring it up. Does that make sense to you? I, well, it does <coughs> make it does make sense. I, I mean, I'm sorry that you've been sort of carrying this yeah. for however long. I don't know how long it's been that that that's been the case. But, I mean, I, I mean, it is disappointing for me to think that maybe this isn't the right time for us to do some things in the okay. house that we were talking about and looking forward to doing. So I do have some <coughs> disappointment about okay. it. I'm not angry with you, okay. but I do feel disappointed. And, you know, that it sounds like we're really going to need to put it off now okay. until things get better. I appreciate you understanding where I'm coming from. Uh -huh. I can really get your disappointment. I appreciate you saying that you're just disappointed, not in me, but in yeah. not being able to do what you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm disappointed, and I am a little frustrated. I admit yeah. that. Yeah, okay. You yeah. know, but, yeah. um, but I hear what you're saying, that, like, you've been carrying this all inside, yeah. and you haven't felt like, you know, why, why did you think I'd be angry with you? That's just where my mind works. Uh, when uh, when oh. I think I'm going to say something hmm. that doesn't fit what you want, it probably reminds me of growing up as a kid in my family. Because hmm. if I, my brother or me or my sister <coughs> or my dad would say anything that didn't fit the way my mother saw it, yeah. she would be really nasty. Oh. So it's just kind of an unconscious interject, as we call it. I see. Oh, fancy word. Isn't it nice? I like it. It's a psychological word. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's not something that I've done that right. I've acted like that with you in the past. Right. It's more like you had this experience as a kid or an adolescent growing up, yeah. and it left you cautious. I think so. About, uh -huh. I mean, that could be the reason. I'm not sure, but it makes sense to me. But in any case, I, I appreciate what, what you're saying, mm -hmm. that you're frustrated and disappointed. So maybe what we can do... It's kind of look at our finances, yeah. figure out what we have. Maybe we could start off small, like do the bathroom, okay. renovate the bathroom. Oh, you think we might be able to do that? I think that we would could do great. that. Yeah, I just I don't yeah. feel comfortable putting three more rooms oh. uh, onto the house. Okay, well let let's let's talk about that. Oh, okay. See if it actually is feasible. I mean, I I, I don't know whether it will be. Given okay, what you're me. that's fair okay. enough. Okay. okay, we'll set a time to look at the figures. All right. Get some estimates and make a decision. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, okay. what do we do there to show what we call giving equal regard, which is the fourth habit that highly successful couples do? Hmm. What did we do? Well, I think we didn't immediately jump to criticism. I mean, I didn't immediately, even though I could, I sort of began to see what was coming down the pike. Yes. Um, from what you were sharing with me, and I, you know, 
I saw that like I wasn't going to be able to have what I thought I was going to be able to, we were going to be able to have. Right. But I tried to steer clear of being angry with you about it. And right. Blaming you, like, what's wrong with you? And, you know, which which I guess I could have gone that route. Yeah, you like, could have. what the heck's wrong how come, with how you? Come but I did? didn't. Well, I didn't because we were demonstrating oh, not to oh, do that. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but, you know, and I was aware. I was aware to stay out of that. That's like a pitfall, exactly. you know what I mean? Um, and, and so, you know, I was practicing oh, okay. more listening to you. Okay. And trying to, you know, sort of put myself in your place, how you were feeling. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of couples uh, think when they get married or live together, love conquers all, mm -hmm. and things will just work out. Wouldn't that be nice? But I think in long-term relationships, if you want to good long-term relationship, whether yeah. that's the two of us, whether that's a relationship with a sibling, mm -hmm. a business partner, a customer. Yeah. It really requires learning some skills, practicing the skills, and not taking the relationship for granted. I think Would you agree? That, yes, I do. And I think that um, that's part of the potential benefit that you can get from having a long-term relationship. Yes. Which is you can, it gives you the opportunity to practice yeah. and learn those things and learn from each other. Like you might be better at one thing, I might be stronger in another. So I think it, it does give you that opportunity as well. And you have to be willing to do the work. Yeah. Or yep. get some help coaching. You have to know there's a skill involved. Yeah. Practice it. Get some coaching if you can find someone to coach you. Um, also, I hmm. think Giving up something, giving up I'm right mm. for this is my point of view. Mm -hmm. And um, that requires a growth mindset. Oh. Being able to learn from experience and ask yourself, what's the big, what's that stake that's bigger than my getting what I want right now? And I think what you and I have learned over the years is connection. Mm -hmm. Like our connection is really important. In almost anything that we argue for, we can argue, because you're quite capable of arguing, as I am, but we don't, I think we no longer fight for the thing as much as we are able to give equal regard and appreciate each other. Nice to say. Doesn't that feel good? Mm -hmm. I like that. Good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so we've now covered the fourth, but remember now, we have, we've done four skills of highly successful couples. These are the habits. Number one, they're not judgmental. Mm -hmm. They don't attack each other, put each other down. They're hard on the problem, but not the person. Number two, they take a stand without putting the other person down personally. Number three, they seek to understand. Like I want, to, like you did for me. You start to understand and not to argue the point or attack me. Mm -hmm. And fourth, the one we did today, which is to... Um, um, Give equal regard. Yeah, giving equal regard. I forgot the words. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. So next time, if we get a chance to do it, we're going to do one called Offering Assurance. Offering yeah. Assurance okay. when you think the other person is taking it personally mm -hmm. or you're coming on a little too strong. Okay. So in terms of our time, today we did this at 10 o'clock on Monday. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly sure what time we're going to do this, so you may have to catch us recorded. This is now live. Hey, Rob, it's good to see you. Thanks for tuning, tuning in. Um, uh, uh, we'll let you know in advance when we're going to do it. But if it's not live, you can always catch us on Facebook or on YouTube, Mondays with Moss. So until we see you again, stay connected, practice one of these good habits, and be well. See you guys. Hi, everyone.